Hi, welcome back to the shop. Thanks for stopping by. This week's video, we are going to make um, a sled for the table saw to cut slots and rolling pin blanks to make Celtic knots from. So what I've done is I got a piece of Baltic birch here, uh, which is really stable. So making making any kind of a jig or or sleds, if you can use a more stable type of plywood, it's it's always better. So what I've done is I have machined two pieces of hardwood which are perfectly fit into the slots of my table saw. So these are three quarter wide by three eighths thick and they are exact, they move nice and there's no play, which is important. Now the hard part about doing these types of slides I found is that you can put lines on your plywood, which I, which I have done here, uh, and put these on the upside down, put some glue and screws in them, but when you do that, you always get some movement. So you never know for sure um, until you go on, this, on the table saw if they're perfect. And if they're out just a tiny bit, when you make the tolerance act tight, they don't slide right and it's a nuisance. So what I've done is I've, uh, I've made them, cut them to length, and I'm leaving them into the track. So, so what I will do is I'm, I'm going to align my plywood along this edge of my table saw table, which is perfectly perpendicular to those tracks. So right there is where I want that. And I'm going to put, before I put screws in this, I'm going to put some glue, just a tiny bead of glue, along the on the top of each one of those. I'm going to set this back down and I'm going to screw it. So I've countersunk uh, for my screw heads yeah, so that they don't get into my, uh, so my screw heads aren't up proud of the surface and it won't affect me when I'm, when I'm working. So I'm going to put a little bead of glue on those right now, very little. Okay, so I'm going to put these right back to the edge again where they belong. Now I drilled this through the plywood and through those little rails. They're not going to move. Table slides great. Take it off. Wipe the glue off the table, wipe the excess glue off the bottom of this where it's squeezed out just a little bit so that it doesn't drag on me later on. <clears throat> Alright, so once you've got your, your base of your, uh, your table um, so that it moves nice and freely and smoothly in the tracks with no play, then you can... I'm going to bring the saw blade up through. Now I don't need to split this all the way through like some, some uh, tables are because I'm only going to make a cut a diagonal, well this way, but it'll be a diagonal piece. It's only going to need to cut to a two and a quarter inch thick piece. So I'm going to start the saw up and I'm going to bring it up through the table and I'm going to rip a notch from here to here. So I'm not sure if I have to split the front of this or not, but I need the line of the saw cut in order to reference where to lay out the blank for the rolling pin. All right, so what I've done is I've got my, uh, I've got my blank here. Now it's a piece of walnut. It's two and a quarter square by 19 and three quarters long. So what I'm going to want to do, I want four inches on each end. That'll allow me the, the, the radius to, to turn down to the handle and then it'll give me the length of the handle on both, both sides. So I don't want my Celtic knot profile to go right to the end of the barrel. So the barrel length is going to be between these two outside lines. But I want to keep it inside of that. So I've marked off one more inch inside of both. Now I've marked this on both sides. So I'm actually five inches in on both sides. So to line this up, the face that is closest to the camera goes to the side of the saw cut that's farthest away from the camera. And on the opposite side, I bring the, uh, that line to the the inside, the side closest to the camera of the saw cut, if that makes sense. So, so the left end in the camera part, that line, that five inch line is on the farthest side of the saw curve. And on the right end, on the opposite side, it's on the closest side of the saw curve. So there it is lined up. So I'm going to mark that. All right, so now I'm going to make some pull downs or some, some fences for this to sit against here and here because the pressure is going to be back and over and I may put a, a, a clamp on it to hold it down and uh, once I get those on here I'll bring you back and show you how we're going to cut this. Alright so I put a front fence on the um, on the sled just because I had the, the only way for me to get in uh, without 
the only way for me to get it safely is to come straight through like this. <clears throat> so I put a lot, I put a piece of birch on here that's lots taller than my maximum depth of my cut. That just keeps those sides nice and strong. I've glued and screwed them from the other side. Counter sunk them the same as this. You want to be really careful when you're doing, actually I can see you're not, but you want to be careful when you're putting screws and stuff in and working on your table saw face that you're not, don't have any heads of your screws or any points of screws underneath scratching um, your surface of your table saw. So all good there. So now I've got my depth of saw, my depth of my cut is set. So I'm going to set the blank in, hold it back to the fence. I'm turn in, I'm going to run the saw through. Once it's completely through, I'm going to stop the saw. So the blank dimension is two and a quarter inches square. And so I've got the saw set to cut two and an eighth inches above the top of the plywood. I don't want to cut it completely in half. I want it to still be attached. That way the alignment uh, isn't an issue. I just have to drop an insert in the saw cut. And that's really the key to uh, keeping things lined up perfectly so your pattern works out every time. An eighth of an inch here, so this isn't going to come apart on me. Now I'm going to go get it. I'm going to mill up a piece of wood, uh, four pieces of wood actually, of maple. I'm going to make them the same width as this saw curve. And I'll measure my saw curve uh, on here. And so I'll, I'll make those up on the bandsaw and I'll run through the double drum sander to make sure they're smooth. And then I have to glue them in one at a time and I'll clamp them from the sides. And I'll do that four times. So there's, here's, this was one cut. I'm going to do the same thing four times, but I have to let it dry every time in between my cuts. So I'm going to mill those up and I'll bring it back when I'm gluing them in. <clears throat> All right, so I made a gauge um, on the saw to get the kerf thickness. And I've taken a little piece of maple, resawed it on my bandsaw, ran it through my double drum sander, and I made the four pieces, which are going to go one at a time in each of these four sides. Made sure that they fit not too loose, not too tight. So they're just right right now. So I'm going to put some glue on those and they are going to be fitted down into this like so and I'm going to clamp them on the sides to make sure that they got good uh, a good um, adhesion and I'll let that set up and then we'll come back and we'll rip another corner and we'll do all four sides the same way. So I'm going to glue this up and I'll bring you back when I'm uh, ripping out the next one. Okay, so this is the very the first one all in and uh, glued up. I'm just going to touch this on the sander to take uh, to take this extra off so that it fits back in the jig properly. And something that I didn't mention um, that is important is that you should mark the direction which part is going through the saw first. Because if you are off just a tiny bit in, in where this saw cut starts and ends by turning it in for end, if it was off in the jig just a little bit wasn't perfectly aligned in the center, then your pattern won't line up. But if you cut it consistently from one side, when you're done, if the measurement for where it entered to the end was different on each end, then you can adjust that by trimming back a little bit off of one end or the other. So I'm going to sand this up and make another cut. All right, so I'll show you this. Um, again, I just said I, I marked this end, and I said make sure that's important that you go the same direction every time. Um, had I done it the right way, just out of curiosity, I just did start and all of my cuts would have started at the exact same place and they would have been spot on. Uh, but I said don't, I said mark it so you don't get mixed up going backwards and I went backwards and you can see that where the cut entered doesn't match here. And so my knot would not have matched up, it would have been, it would have looked terrible. So this one's scrap, but uh, I have got a gap here, a pretty significant one actually, which I don't know, must have moved, I must have moved in my lines when I was putting it, drawing it out, but, uh, so I need to split this difference, and, and because it's back this way, that means that the blank was closer toward me uh, than it should have been, so I need to take a spacer and put it up against the stop here, which is half of this distance, so I'm going to measure this off, and I'm going to put a little, put a little piece in here, uh, that way my profile will be centered on my piece, so I will put a shim in this, to take that out. All right, where I've already shown this once, I'm going to just zing through these at uh, four times speed on this new blank. And I did, I did rather than uh, try and drag the sled backwards after I stopped the saw, uh, I just stopped it in place and picked the piece up off top of it. It was a lot cleaner coming off.
Okay, so we got our blank already. Just gonna zoom in here and show you a couple things. Um, so this blank is made two and a quarter inches, as I said earlier on. I made the cuts through the blank to put the inserts in at two and an eighth inches. So I have an eighth of an inch on every face over thick. So I could cut that off from the table saw. I'm just gonna turn it off though. I'm not gonna monkey around with it. Um, and normally I would saw my corners off at a 45 just to make it easier, but I kind of want to see how this thing looks as it's going through. It's the first one I've ever made. So um, now this is going to go to Bruce Jordan at Jordan Woodworks. Bruce won my 500 subscriber draw a long time ago. Uh, but if you, I'm going to leave a link to Bruce's site. Go check him out. Bruce is a really good turner. Turns some beautiful burl wood. Makes all kinds of neat things. And so uh, I didn't want to send him just a plain uh, laminated yellow birch rolling pin. I thought I'd send him something a little higher end because he certainly can make a, a plain laminated rolling pin himself in about 15 minutes. And I'm sure he can make one of these in very you know, the same amount of time or shorter than it's taken me. But uh, anyway, I wanted to send him a, something a little higher end from one turner to another. So. Um, so Bruce, sorry it's taking so long, buddy, but uh, this one's coming your way, and everybody, if you get a chance, to check out his, uh, his site. He does some nice stuff. So I'm going to start on this with a spindle roughing gouge, and uh, we'll get it rounded up, and then we'll lay out where our handles are, and um, we'll see how it looks. Okay, that's great. So I am going to sand this barrel. Then I'm going to put the tapers on. Pretty pleased with how that all turned out. Okay, so I just sanded this to 180 uh, for now. And I'm going to round the rest of these out and lay out where I want to put my tapers for the handles. And then we'll sand up the, whole, the entire thing after the fact.
Okay, so I've got the pin turned now and it's sanded up uh, to 320. I marked the ends where I'm going to start rounding it over. Um, and I'm going to do that with a skew chisel. Just going to turn it down small uh, so I can get a nice rounded uh, finished end on each end. And uh, I'm going to use hot wax on it. So the reason I'm putting the finish on now, there's two reasons. One is I'm going to touch this thing with the skew and anything could happen. So um, worst case scenario, I can always salvage it by sanding the ends after the fact if I do happen to get a catch or something down here. <clears throat> the other one is that when I make this, when I cut this down smaller and round this off, uh, it, it's very apt to, um, it's very apt to, to start vibrating. I really like hot wax. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to make the handle smaller. That might be a trick. All right, I'm gonna resand these and I'm gonna put some finish on them and we'll be good to go. All right, <clears throat> get everything finished back off again for the second time. I actually like this profile a little bit better anyhow, kind of suits the Celtic knot better I think, but uh, I'm gonna go back at it with a hot wax, buff that in. All right, we're all set. I'm gonna take it off the lathe now and I'm gonna sand up the ends the same as I always do and I've done that in other videos, so I'm not gonna bother showing that to you. I will put a link in the description of, um, of a video that I made turning a French rolling pin in and a regular one and how I finish the ends off if you wanna check that out. Uh, so Bruce, you are going to get the first and so far only one of these, buddy. I hope you like it. And uh, again, sorry for the delay in getting it to you. Uh, if you're still with me, thanks for sticking around. I really appreciate it. Um, if you like what you saw and you haven't subscribed, I'd appreciate it if you could do that as well. Um, and thanks again to everyone who watches the videos and has already subscribed. Um, so we will see you next time.